very hard to charge her through those waves because it's a low sea. You don't have a lot of depth. Way. She was an owner of one of these camel train companies and he worked for her. And he would go out all over the Arabian Peninsula and the Middle East. And I think he had good intentions. He learned of the faith of one God. Now he came from a very pagan place, Jahliya, the Pagan before Islam. Now tell me something. In the seventh century, who had the knowledge and the faith of one God around this area? Who would that be? Who? The Jews. Who else? Christians. Christians and Jews. How about that? So he learned of the faith of one God. Somebody must have taught him. Now, if you read the Quran, you can't deny. They recognize all the prophets of old. They recognize Abraham, Moses, David. They recognize Isa, Jesus, Ashura, the 12 disciples. They're all recognized in the Quran. And it seems like somebody wanted to bring the faith of one God to the Arabian world. And the faith is central city for, where all the pagans would come and meet. The Kaukaba is part of that worship, that black rock that we see. And Muhammad is coming and saying, no, 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 there's only one God, Allah. Allahu Akbar, he's the greatest. There is no other God but one. So they don't like to hear that and they want to kill the man. And they nearly do. In 612, he has to run for his life. And who saves him? Who saves Muhammad from death? Who can get Peter Pan. Who? Peter Pan. No, the Jews. There was a city called Yathrib. And there was Jewish tribes there. And those Jews saved the prophet Muhammad. They spared his life and they saved him. Jewish tribe of Yathrib saved Muhammad's life. And he comes to them and he says, Thank God for you. We have the same religion. We worship the same God. And by the way, I have a new gospel. Jews don't have good experiences with new gospel. So they reject it. And that is where you should learn a very important lesson. There is no greater enemy than a disappointed lover. And from that time on, the Quran kind of changes after the rejection of those tribes who endorse Islam. And eventually, he would kill off some of them, he would sell the rest of them to slaves, he would take Yathrib and change it to Al Madina, and he would have a peace signing with Mecca that he would uh, break it and then he would go. Because as long as you have, it's good to do the Ten Commandments for sure between Muslims. So if you're not Muslim, that's all right. Still, still, you're not Muslim. That's all not lie. Eventually, Muhammad is witnessing his own religion become
becoming the fastest growing religion when he is about to die somewhere around 630 plus minus. He already sees his armies capturing Israel under Oman, it was called Palestine back then, and he already sees Oman and his armies advancing towards Tunisia. And that's when I already told you the attitude of Islam to Christianity, it's all fair and good. They're the people of the book, but nevertheless, um, lacking the truth, they have to pay a special tax. Uh, over here, eventually, some might tell you that Abraham was a Muslim. Some might tell you that Moses was a Muslim. Some might tell you that Jesus was a Muslim. But we know for a fact that the first Muslim in the world was the lady called Hadija. Right? Muhammad's wife was the first Muslim. Hadija. Just to make that clear. She's the one that hears him after he meets with Gabriel, the angel. After Gabriel comes and shows him, from now on you are going to write what I tell you. And he starts writing the Quran. Hadija is the one who embraces him and who gives him power, encourages him, saying, yes, you have been chosen for this reason to be a prophet. Hadija is the first Muslim in the world. So, and we've got into all of that stuff concerning Jews and Christians and the prophecy that uh, shed light on the situation that I won't uh, elaborate about now. But you will see that we are standing under a crescent. The crescent is the symbol. And that is the symbol of night. When it's dark, that is the symbol that they embrace. The darkness. They love the darkness. But we know that the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. And the light of the sun shall shine bright as the light of the seven days. When the Lord bounds the breach of his people and heals the stroke of the wind. And as much as they, they love their darkness, there will be a great light that will come out. And then finally, we might even remember that the law shall go forth out of Zion and the word of the Lord from the return. Nations shall gather together. They will come to Jerusalem to worship. And the knowledge of the Lord shall fill all the earth as the waters that cover the sea. So is this the front door? No. It's they, the back this door. would have been the front door of the building that was here before. But now they have moved with this building that was built in 695 to commemorate what happened to Muhammad when he left Mecca on a night's journey to the edge. They never knew where the edge was until 695. Al-Aqsa became identified with the edge. Over here he will come. He will meet with the angel Gabriel and he will ascend up to heaven. First heaven, second heaven, third heaven, every heaven he meets another prophet. In the sixth heaven he meets Abraham and then the angel Gabriel says from here on I must leave and you must go on your own. He goes up in the seventh heaven and he meets with the Lord. He comes back down and he meets with Abraham again. Abraham asked him what did you do up there? You must have met the Lord. Yes father I did. And the Lord he told you to do something. Did he not? Yes he did. He told me to pray. How many times did he tell you to pray? Fifty. Fifty times, that is way too much, you must go up and negotiate. He goes back up and he comes down with forty. He comes down, forty, he says that's still too much, he goes up and comes down with thirty. You can do much better than that, I'm sure. He goes up, he comes down with twenty. What kind of descendant of mine you are? Look at these Jews, how good businessmen they are. You must do better. Then, try one last time, he goes up, he comes down with five. This is where he gets the order to pray five times a day from this very place. That is very important, because that is one of the five pillars of Islam, prayer. And the other one is pilgrimage, to do hajj. And the other one is fasting during Ramadan. And the other one is to give charity. And the fifth one is to witness. La ilaha 
but Allah and Muhammad is Rasul of all the prophets and by God. That is what they're supposed to do five times a day. And it all started here. Okay.